Frank Regano, and Oscar Goodman are generally familiar to anyone interested in mob lawyers. Regano was friends with mobsters and self-described as a mob lawyer during his term. After being rehabilitated as an attorney after being convicted of tax evasion, Regano began representing Sando Traficante and other criminals. Stay tuned as we look at the top five mafias represented by Frank Regano. Number five, Jimmy Hoffa. Jimmy dropped out of school at the age of 14 and went to work as a stock boy for Frank and Cedar Dry Goods and General Merchandising. In 1932, he became a loader for the Kroger Food Company. In 1936, he became a joint council organizer for Local 299, part of the Detroit Teamsters Joint Council 43, after being fired from Kroger for rabble-rousing. It was the start of a tumultuous union career. He was the face of the American labor movement from the mid to late 20th century. Hoffa, at 62, went missing while on his way to meet with three mob figures in Bloomfield Township, Michigan. The flamboyant Teamsters president was last seen in the parking lot of the Matches Red Fox restaurant on July 30, 1975, after clashing with former organized crime allies over a possible return to the union's presidency. Later in the video, we'll talk about James Burke, a strategic criminal known for organizing the Lafanza heist in 1978. Number 4. Henry Hill Jr. Henry Hill Jr. was a Lukey's crime family member who became a federal informant, inspiring Martin Scorsese's film Goodfellas. Hill, the son of an Irish father and a Sicilian mother, could never be a made mafia member because he wasn't a true Italian, but his charm and cunning earned him a place within the Lukey's crime family. Hill quickly became a close associate and friend of Paul Vario, one of the family's more respected capos. In his adolescence, Hill ran errands for Vario and his crew before transitioning to more serious crime. Beginning in 1955, he spent three decades in the Mafia. Hill lived up to his gangster image by having several affairs and staying out until the wee hours of the morning, drinking, partying, and playing cards. Hill was sentenced to 10 years in prison for assaulting a non-paying gambler whose sister worked for the FBI. Once inside, he quickly discovered that Mafia members were given preferential treatment by convicts and guards who crime families had paid off. Hill used his prison narcotics contacts after his release to move large amounts of cocaine from Brooklyn to Pittsburgh. Hill's drug addiction worsened as his operation expanded. Hill only became a federal witness after he realized he was next on the hit list. His testimony led to the convictions of some of New York's most feared mobsters, including Vario. Number 3. James Burke James Burke, also known as Jimmy the Gent, was a Lukey's crime family associate who is thought to have organized the 1978 Lafance Heist, the largest cash robbery in American history at the time. He suspected of the deaths of those involved in the months that followed the robbery. Following Henry Hill's testimony, Burke was convicted of conspiracy charges and sentenced to 12 years in prison in 1982 for his role in the 1978-79 Boston College basketball point-shaving scandal. He was convicted of murder and sentenced to another 20 years in prison while incarcerated. He died of cancer eight years before he would have been eligible for parole at the Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, New York. Frank Regano's most famous client was Traficante and we have all the details on him coming up. Number 2. Carlos Joseph Marcello From 1947 to the late 1980s, Carlos Joseph Marcello was the Italian-American crime boss of the New Orleans crime family. Apart from his involvement in the American Mafia, he is also well known because others have claimed that Carlos Marcello, Santo Traficante Jr. and Sam Gincana conspired in the 1963 assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy. Marcello was arrested and charged with selling more than 10 kilograms, 23 pounds, of marijuana in 1938. Marcello served less than 10 months in prison and only paid a $400 fine as a consequence of a bargain struck with former Governor Huey Long. Despite earning another lengthy prison sentence and a $76,830 fine, Marcello became acquainted with Frank Costello, the leader of the Genovese crime family in New York City after his release from prison. 
Marcello supplied the muscle and coordinated the placement of the machines in local businesses. Become a subscriber to the channel and never miss an investigation again. We'll do our best to provide them to you as close to the original as we can. You'll be the first to see it if you enable post notification. Shortly after marrying into the Tadero family, he teamed up with an associate of the Genovese criminal family, Mayor Lansky, to steal money from some of the most significant casinos in the New Orleans area. Marcello had been selected as the godfather of the New Orleans Mafia by the family's capos and with the commission's sanction following the deportation of his predecessor, Silvestro Carola, to Sicily. The following 30 years saw him in this position. Two witnesses in a 1975 extortion trial referred to Marcello as the godfather of the New Orleans crime syndicate. Interesting. Interesting. Number 1. Santo Traficante Jr. Santo Traficante Jr. was one of the most powerful mafia bosses in America. His father, Santo Traficante Sr., oversaw organized crime activities in Florida and Cuba and had previously combined a number of rival gangs into the Traficante crime family. He's also the most controversial mafia Frank Regano represented. Your attorney, Mr. Regano. Santo Traficante had ties to the Venano crime family in New York, but was more closely associated with Sam Gincana in Chicago. He was widely regarded as the most powerful organized crime figure in Florida for much of the 20th century. Santo Traficante asked Regano in 1975 to send an urgent message to Hoffa to be very careful and not take any chances. Santo Traficante admitted to the United States House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1978 that he was involved in anti-Castro activities, but vehemently denied knowing about a plot to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. In the summer of 1986, federal investigators charged him with racketeering and conspiracy. Throughout the 1950s, Santo Traficante was arrested on a variety of bribery and illegal Belita lotteries charges in Tampa's Iber City District. Except for one conviction, he escaped prosecution. It's just surprising how criminals are able to do this. He received a five-year prison term in 1954 for bribery, but the Florida Supreme Court reversed the conviction before he even went to jail. We appreciate you taking the time to watch another video with us. If you think that all that we have just learned about Ragano and the crimes he stood for, then you are probably not ready for what is still to learn in the sequel to this film. It is gangster Frank Ragano and told truth with the mobster. In that video, we tell the untold story of the mob lawyer and his expeditions. If you have the opportunity, you should look into it.